And here with us now is Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council. Tony, welcome. Great to have you with us this evening. Um, so Republicans, you just heard Speaker Mac uh, McCarthy there, or excuse me, Leader McCarthy, you know, really taking the issue of education and running with it. What lessons will both parties take from this election, Tony? It's been quite amazing to watch. This was a perfect storm, and it was created by the Democrats. Um, what happened yesterday is I believe voters gave the Democratic Party and their their politicians and their policies a failing grade. And this is in large part to what uh, is the result of Joe Biden and his policies. Let's talk about this issue of education that was just mentioned. That really wasn't on the radar. It's never been an issue, a winning issue for Republicans. But because of the Biden administration pushing their gender ideology, their CRT curriculum into schools, this became a huge issue in the Virginia race. In fact, nearly a quarter of Virginia voters said education was the number one issue for them in voting for Glenn Youngkin. That's, you, you hardly ever hear of that occurring where Republicans benefit from the public education issue, but parents are so fed up with what is happening with this leftist agenda being carried out in classrooms that they've said enough is enough. And the Republicans are smart. Uh, Glenn Youngkin was smart to do this. And the Republicans in Congress are smart to do this as well, to stand on the side of parents. Tony, you just drew a contrast between the competing agendas. Do you think the election results spook Democrats nationally and perhaps sink Biden's social spending bill as the party rethinks its agenda? It should scare the devil out of them, quite frankly, uh, with what we saw yesterday. But do they uh, straighten up and fly right? Uh, I don't know that they can help themselves. You've got the progressives who are actually saying, well, the reason we didn't do well yesterday is because we haven't pushed the $3.5 trillion bill and haven't gotten it across with all of its social spending, socialist goodies in it. See, I, I think some are completely tone deaf to what voters are saying. I do think that Nancy Pelosi is going to have a much different, much more difficult time in keeping uh, her uh, her house, her Democratic caucus, uh, corralled because I, I, from being in politics for nearly 25 years, self-preservation is uh, one of the top issues for elected officials, and uh, the where she is leading them is not going to lead uh, to the success of their political careers. Uh, Tony, I want to shift gears here and talk about the Supreme Court. Um, another major uh, Second Amendment case today over a New York law putting restrictions on concealed handguns. Uh, curious how you expect the court to rule on this one, Tony. It was interesting, you look at the oral arguments, uh, the questions that were being asked uh, from the conservative justices seemed to see, see that they were sympathetic, uh, and that's good, toward the Constitution and the Second Amendment. Look, as a former police officer, and, and one who I believe in the Second Amendment, and you see, this is another issue that uh, is going to, I think, factor into the elections, because in New York, you have some of these same elected officials that are talking about defunding the police, standing on the side of those who are breaking the law, and the average citizen afraid to go out of their homes. And so they simply want to protect themselves. The criminals have guns. Why shouldn't law-abiding citizens? And that seems to be uh, the direction the court was going. So I'm optimistic with what I heard from the court. Tony, real quickly here, um, you know, the, the, the justices also heard the Texas heartbeat law earlier this week. Justice Kavanaugh expressed some concern about the Lone Star State's enforcement mechanism, saying that it could infringe on other constitutional rights like uh, gun rights and free speech. Does he have a point? In a few seconds we have left. Yeah, fair, very fascinating structure of the law. But I think we need to keep our eye, for those of us concerned about the life issue in Roe v. Wade, the real case is the Dobbs case. This was more mm -hmm. looking at the legal structure, not the issue itself. That comes December 1st. We're prayerful and optimistic that the court will do the right thing and uphold the sanctity of human life. All right, Tony Perkins with the Family Research Council. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Good sir. to see you. Thank you.